Uh, hello, mysterious person behind the screen. Uh, listen, I don't have much time. They're everywhere. I can't believe we've been so blind. They are everywhere. Trust me. I know. I know what they've done. I've seen what they can do. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. They are everywhere. And I've just put my foot on the ground, haven't I? <laughs> if I make it through this, here's my review. I'll flatline. And if I don't... <laughs> shake them off they weren't in a hurry to let me go though yeah so did you all enjoy flatline i know i did it won't go down as a classic and it's not perfect but what story is it's just a really great episode written by jamie Matheson. i find out how to pronounce his name but yeah i really did enjoy this episode and it seemed the majority did as well i've met very few people that actually didn't like it so that's always a good sign i think jamie Matheson. Like they should definitely keep him on. He'd be one. He'd be one of my picks to replace Moffat when Moffat leaves. He'd be one of uh, my p picks to replace him. He's such a good writer. Two episodes he's done for Series Eight, two, and they've both been one of the greatest of Series Eight, or well, two of the greatest of Series Eight, I should say. So let's look more in depth at the uh, structure of the story, shall we? Uh, Flatline. Here we go. So the uh, pre-title sequence was I sort of emulated with my chair there in the pre-title sequence to this video um, was really spooky, creepy and just provided some mystery for the episode it was it was such a great pre-title sequence that left you wanting more and that's what a pre-title sequence should do shouldn't it it should leave you wanting more and wanting to find out what happens next uh, such a great pre-title sequence for this story. So after the opening titles, which they didn't keep the thing where the the num the title of the story faded into the actual story from the opening titles, they didn't keep it from last week. So I wish they did though. You know how much I love that. It was brilliant, <laughs> but they didn't keep it. So sad. So our first scene is with Clara and the Doctor and the Tardis, and they land in Bristol. I have to say, I think it did look, look, look a lot like Bristol. Um, I know it was filmed in Gloucester, according to Doctor Who Extra, but it really did look a lot like Bristol. Um, they did a good job with that location. We see the TARDIS has been shrunk. Um, but I like that idea, sure, but I mean, it was a bit silly. I mean, when, he, when Peter Capaldi walked out of this like miniaturised TARDIS, about this big, I guess, um, it was funny, yeah, but... I, it's a bit silly, but, you know, I'm not really complaining too much about it. And then the TARDIS shrinks even more into the size of this. I'm pretty sure this is the one of... This is a light, lifelike replica, apart from it doesn't have the Doctor inside it. Um, but, yeah, it was pretty much this size. But it was funny, but, I mean, the effect of it... Meh. It was. It looked like an iPhone screen had been shoved in the front of it with Peter Capaldi's face on it. That's what it did look like. It was okay in some areas, but when he like when he put the hammer through, for example, that wasn't that bad. But I mean, like when when his face wasn't, it was just sort of meh. Speaking of dodgy CGI, this series hasn't been the greatest for CGI. Actually, a lot of the things have been really, really badly rendered and and you know stuff like that but the bonus in this episode wow was that a good effect i was blown away by that effect i didn't really think it was very good at first but at a second viewing and a second glance they are really good they must have spent money on that 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 was so good they scanned the actors bodies onto it it was so good such a good effect and very redeeming for this series so the clara assumes the role of the doctor now, I'm, go I'm not going to lie, I wasn't particularly looking forward to this aspect of the episode. I mean, I'm not a fan of Doctor Light stories, and I certainly wasn't a fan when I heard it would be a Doctor Light story with Clara. But, you know, I think Jenna Coleman managed to, you know, pull it off. I, It wasn't really Doctor Light either. The Doctor was always there, guiding her. I, I mean, if it was like... Uh, scene with the Doctor at the beginning, one scene in the middle, and then at the end, 
then I don't think it would have worked. I don't think Jenna Coleman could have done that all by herself. But, you know, for what it was, I think she did a pretty good job. She even had her own companion, Rigsby, Rigsy, I think it's Rigsy, um, something or other. Um, yeah, he was really cool. I, I'm, I would like to see him again, actually, as, like, maybe a secondary companion. I know it's probably going to be Danny Pink. I mean, I really like to see Rigsy. He was, um, he was a really good companion. So then we... Wait a minute. Just in case any more of those things come back to get me, since I'm talking about them right now. It looks pretty safe, I guess. But yeah, the boneless. I've already mentioned how good the effect was, but when they weren't like in 3D, when they were just on the walls, I really thought they were, they were pretty good, actually. Um, because it's the fear of usually if something's coming to get you, you can like cower in the wall, but that takes that aspect away from it, and it's terrifying because of it. Like, and because they get to the floor as well, you can't, you know, touch the floor either. You have to hop on chairs like I did at the beginning, and. You know, I guess it is terrifying because of that. And it's such a great original monster. I mean, Jamie Matheson, he's done two brilliant original stories this series. They've been so original and fantastic and brilliant. I, I, I don't do them justice. Just go watch Mummy on the Orange Express and um, Flatline back to back and then watch a story that's kind of been done to death like a storyline that's kind of been done to death, you'll notice how much more enjoyable Jimmy Matheson's scripts are. All clean. So we had our secondary villain for the episode. He wasn't really a villain, he was just an idiot. Um, I don't even remember his name, because even though I watched this this morning, I don't like his character. And that wasn't the intention. That was, you didn't, you weren't supposed to like his character. I mean, come on. That memorial, though, he threw away. Uh, he was gonna paint over a memorial. That's the, that's just the people these days, though, unfortunately. But yeah, anyway, more on to his character. He was a good secondary. I'm just gonna call him a villain. Secondary villain for this episode. Um, when Clara walked up to him and said, "Uh, you, listen, who I am, I'm the only chance of you, you that you've got of surviving." That was great. It put him in his place, and I was just like. Yes! And speaking of Clara, she went bearable in this episode. Yes! Another trope of Jamie Matheson. He was, she was bearable last week, she's bearable here. Jamie Matheson can make Clara bearable. Let it be known. But yeah, in the Doctor's words, she made a mighty fine Doctor. I mean, I, I think it was... Part of me thinks they're going to choose a female Doctor now. Because I wonder if this was to reassure people that a female Doctor can work. Because she did work as the Doctor. I don't know, it's just something that I thought of while I was watching it. I thought, eh, could this be a female Doctor now? Could, there be, could it have to be Capaldi? Could he regenerate into a female Doctor? So, you know, I... It's put my fears at rest that it won't work. I think it could work. But I don't think that Peter Capaldi will leave any time soon. I think he'll do one more series, if not... A couple more series. Hopefully I'll do a couple more. Because he really is a fantastic Doctor. And that shows in this episode when he basically gave the most awesome delivery of I Am The Doctor ever. I mean, like, I don't think Matt Smith's delivery of it in The Eleventh Hour was pretty good. But this just blew out of the water. It came running out of the TARDIS. I Am The Doctor and I Name You The Boneless. That was awesome. That was so good. I really loved how he delivered that line. Um, Peter Capaldi is such a great actor and a brilliant, brilliant Doctor. Coming back to the dodgy CGI again. Uh, in in this episode when the TARDIS landed on the railway tracks, well, put it this way, the writing on the top, the police public call box, that was way too big for what it could have been. The TARDIS was pretty much hanging off, but it had no gravity to it. It was just sort of sitting on the tracks. It was almost hanging off. Oh god, it was that was one of the awful moments of CGI in this series. If not one of it's one of, if not the most awful bit of CGI in this series so far. God. It's just a big right in hanging off the tracks with no gravity, just like it was staying there. Oh god. 
I know it only appeared for a split second in that, but if you freeze frame it, you can really, really see how bad it is, or even if you watch it in slow motion. Oh, oh. it was just really bad effect. So Missy was back again at the end of this episode with an iPad. Oh. Doesn't that defeat the whole purpose of science? It was from our world. You could clearly see that it was an iPad. Oh my god. She couldn't they just made a prop for it or I don't I don't believe I'm saying this. CGI'd it in? Oh my god. Having the iPad there just defeats the purpose of science fiction. It was from our world and it's just it feels like they ran out of budget so they thought, oh no prop hey, just give her this, give her this, give her this. Oh and God. God was it lazy. But anyway, she she did say something kind of intriguing. Um, could she be an amalgamation of the Doctor? I don't know, cause you know that's one of the th that's one of my theories anyway. I don't know. Um, people have many different theories about Missy, to be honest. But let me get one thing straight: Missy is not River Song or the Master. God. It really annoys me when people say that she is, because she isn't, okay? Just don't even go there, she isn't. But anyway, next week's episode, In the Forest of the Night. I don't really know what to say, to be honest. I've seen so many comments on the Next Time trailer on YouTube just saying, oh my god, this list looks awful. There are annoying kids in it, and when I say annoying, I mean really annoying. I got annoyed by listening to them in the Next Time trailer, so I'm not dreading next week's, but... I'm not, like, so, oh my god, it's going to be the best episode of the series, jumping up and down with excitement either. But, you know, it's a Doctor Who episode, I'm, of course I'm excited for it. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this review. If you want to see more reviews, please hit the subscribe. Come on! Oh, not again! Oh. This saved me. Thank god for you. But yes, if you'd like to see more reviews from like this, then um, please hit the subscribe button. It really helps me out. And like and comment and do all that good jazz. So I'll see you soon, guys.